Good morning and welcome to this Sunday's worship. I hope you and your family are learning to embrace the slow and steady that this world has become. Today we've decided to start things off a little differently. We're going to do a children's story, that's why you're seeing me here, and then Tracy's going to come on, um, deliver the scripture and her wonderful message. So last week we talked about chalking the walk with the kids and I hope you got out with your family and saw some encouraging messages. But this week I want to talk about hearts. Hearts are a symbol of love and love is something a lot of people need right now. Especially those that are um, on the front lines of this COVID-19 crisis, um, those that are still delivering goods, those that are working um, in grocery stores or delivering medication to others that need it. Um, love is also something that people need right now because a lot of people are feeling lonely or frustrated or sad about the circumstances that our world is coming to. But I also wanted to talk about windows. See, windows provide us with light, whether it be a natural shine from the sun, the glow of the moon, or sometimes the headlights of cars driving by. Another source of light in our lives is Jesus. He is the light of our lives as Christians and the person we turn to in times of darkness. So with these two items in mind, hearts, windows, and this person, Jesus, I have a task for you. Take some time today to make a heart. And if you're up to it, write on the heart a prayer of love for those who need it. Then take that heart and hang it in the window so that together you can create a symbol of both love and light in your home, but also for everyone that's passing by. Now, I hope you enjoy Tracy's message and have a wonderful Sunday. Hello everyone, it's good to be here and, and to be able to worship again. I know we're not together in one place and yet I trust that we're together in spirit and so I'm grateful for that. And thank you to Chelsea for her message and for her inspiration and, and for her reminder to us that there are so many ways that we can reach out and share God's love and, and just even from within our homes we can be saying to people that, that we notice them and we see them and, and that we value them. And so thank you to Chelsea for that message. Our scripture story this morning that I'm going to share with you is part of a larger story of Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus. In chapter 11 of John's gospel, Lazarus has died, and it has been four days since his death when Jesus arrives. Martha and Jesus have a conversation about resurrection and new life, and this is the time when Jesus tells Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Then Mary comes and she greets Jesus on the road. And this is where we enter into our story. I'm reading to you from chapter 11 of John's Gospel, verses 32 to 44. When Martha had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and he's calling for you. And when Mary heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet. She said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. Jesus said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. 
Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, there already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When Jesus had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the word of God for us today. It's not difficult for us to imagine the scene in the reading that we shared this morning. We know it all too well. Mary and Martha, surrounded by family and friends, filled with grief at the loss of their brother. Tears, uncertainty, accusation, desperation, the very real experiences of grief lived out for us in this gospel story. The very real experiences of grief lived out in our lives and each of us feeling it in our own way. I know that some of you are grieving the loss of loved ones, a grief that is so all-consuming at times. Some are grieving the loss of health, the loss that comes with change. At this time in our world in particular, grief is being felt by in many, many ways. People are grieving the loss of jobs, stability, financial security. People are grieving the loss of connections and social gatherings, the, those cuddles with grandchildren and, and the chats with the neighbors, the loss of dreams that have had to be changed, of goals and plans that are needing to be redefined the loss of a familiar way of life that, that had become comfortable. And while some of us might struggle to name what we are experiencing as grief, a recent article in the Harvard Business Review referenced a renowned grief expert, David Kessler. Kessler talked about the reality that in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, many of us are grieving as individuals and collectively. It's important for us to name our grief, to not apologize for it or minimize it or rationalize it away, but to name those things which we have lost. Researchers teach us that when we name our grief out loud, it takes some of the power away. It gives us a new place to begin and expression for what we're feeling. So today I ask you, what are you grieving? Can you name it right now without worrying about anyone else judging it? Without belittling what you're feeling because you think maybe it's not, or maybe it's minimal compared to what others are experiencing? Can you come before God and lift up the grief that is on your heart? It's hard. And I'm sorry for the grief that you're experiencing. And I pray that in this grief, you feel God's presence as you continue to turn to God and share your thoughts and your feelings and, and all of the things that are happening for you right now. And as we learn in our gospel lesson this morning, in the face of grief, grief for his friend, grief for the community of which he was a part, Jesus wept. Jesus wept. And I trust that today, Jesus weeps with us too. That as we name our grief we have, as we experience so many different emotions right now, God in Christ weeps with us and weeps for us. 
the one who knows us and loves us and is always with us, shares in our grief. And as we also learn from our gospel story, Jesus did not stop with the grief. Jesus wasn't done. He knew that there was something more, something more transformational than, than grief and loss and death. We remember from our reading that Jesus called Lazarus to come out. And in the same ways, he calls us too, calling us from our dark places, calling us in our grief and calling us into new life. That new life might look different for each of us. And today we might not know or even begin to imagine what that new life looks like. Some of you may be discovering it already as you find new life and in the ways you reach out to others or, or spending time with a loved one. As you spend time recalling treasured memories or, or being intentional about prayer or doing things that bring peace to your soul. Some of you may still be listening for that voice longing for that voice that calls you out, anticipating what shape new life might take for you. In difficult times, in times of change and uncertainty and loss, it's so important for us to name our grief and recognize the loss. And yet we don't leave it at that. We lift our eyes and search for those resurrection moments in our midst. We move into new life, trusting that the one who calls us will meet us there. Friends, we are Easter people. We are people who believe in the power of resurrection, in God's ability to bring new life. We are people who trust that life is always more powerful than death, and that in God, there is always hope this day and every day. My prayer for you is that wherever you might be, that you might encounter the God of new life, the God of transformation and love who will meet you right where you are at. My prayer for you is that new life will be yours in your homes, in your workplaces, in this experience that we are all in together, that you might trust in the power of God's love and know beyond a doubt that God is with you. May it be so. May it be so. Amen. This time I invite you to join me in prayer. Creating One, we come to you now from our various homes and spaces, and yet still in community as your people and as your church. We come in this unfamiliar way, and yet so thankful that no matter where we are, we can worship. God, you know the grief we are experiencing, each in our own way. The times are uncertain, and that causes anxiety, concern, fear. Yet you, O oh God, you call us out. You invite us into new life and into hope, not only for ourselves, but for our world. Continue to call us, O oh God, and help us to listen. God, so many prayers on our minds and our hearts. Today we pray for business owners who are trying to retain their staff and, and find ways to carry on. We pray for educators who want to reach out to their students but, but who are uncertain what that looks like. We pray for first responders who continue to serve never knowing what they might encounter. We pray for those making and supplying medical devices for those providing food and essentials, medications. We pray for our United Church of Canada 
and the staff and the leaders who are finding creative ways for our congregations to continue to offer ministry and, and to reach out. We pray for all those who are risking themselves as they provide care and wisdom and compassion. We pray for one another. We pray for our families and our friends. We pray that we might continue to turn to you to find hope in your presence and to live in response to your love. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just by way of an announcement, I wanted to let you know that next Sunday we will celebrate communion, each in our different places. We'll provide you with more detail closer to that time. But over the week, if you want to think about the communion elements you might want to use, it may be bread and juice or something else that is a staple in your home and in your life. Cookies and milk, tea and toast, crackers and soup, some everyday reality in your life. Something that will become symbols of love, grace and hope for you as we celebrate communion together in community next Sunday. I pray that you are safe, that you are well, that if you need assistance, you will reach out by email to the church, to me personally, through phone, to a friend. There are so many people who are wanting to be supportive. My prayer for you as you go into God's world, even if that is in God's world in your own home, that you may know the deep love God has for you, that you may trust in God's presence, and that you might live in peace. Amen. This morning we will continue to worship with the beautiful music that is offered by Susan and by Avery. <laughs> 